Здравствуйте. С сожалением, это все, что я могу по русском сказать. Я буду говорить по английскому. So the tools. I would like to talk about the tools that you are already familiar with, but also, like Lena mentioned, I would like to uncover some things that are totally new and some of them maybe not yet familiar to you. But uh, apparently every speaker so far decided to go back to the past and I will be no exception. I would like to start with how web development used to look like in the year 2000. This, this is the year when I did my first website and when you wanted to debug some JavaScript, this is what you had. How many of you are familiar with this dialogue? Yeah, so some old school people should recognize this dialogue. And unfortunately, this was the only way to debug JavaScript back then, when the dominant browser was Netscape 4 and i 5 But then you could say that this tool was maybe effective sometimes, but not very sophisticated. However, things got better. In 2001, Mozilla released an excellent extension to their browser. It was called DOM Inspector, and it was already a very helpful tool for web developers because this tool allows you to see the current structure of a DOM tree as it was interpreted by the browser. So not what you could see in the source view, but actual memory representation. And it was very helpful to debug. But for JavaScript, we had to also get some better tools. And this was the first, at least to my knowledge, efficient JavaScript debugger. It was called Venkman. Uh, has any of you used this tool? Yeah, so very, very few people. Uh, I discovered this tool in 2005, and I would say that this was much more efficient hammer than the one uh, we had before at our disposal. Unfortunately, it was still not efficient enough to get really good at creating large-scale JavaScript applications. So this Web 2.0 revolution that happened in 2005 probably would not be possible uh, without more sophisticated tools. Luckily, we had this guy. I would say that Joe Hewitt is a person who single-handedly improved the development tools the most. And why is this guy so important? Well, he's the maker of Firebug. Firebug, when it was introduced in 2006, was a total revolution. So even people who didn't use Firefox before for development, almost everyone switched immediately to using Firebug. And very quickly, it has become a standard for developing JavaScript, for profiling JavaScript or editing CSS live in the browser. So this was 2005, 2006, but now the situation is more like that. So we have even more frameworks, more standards, more libraries, and there is a lot, a lot of complexity that in the past didn't really happen in JavaScript. So for that, we need better tools. Right now, these tools are really getting standardized and are getting embedded in a browser. So Firebug was the first one, and it set the bar for what we are using right now. But uh, in 2013, both Chrome, Safari, and also Firefox, they have a lot of functionality that was introduced by Firebug, built in, baked in, directly in the browser itself. And what I will demonstrate later on in my presentation is that very often you don't even need Firebug anymore if you would like to profile your JavaScript, edit CSS, use console. And new browser tools even have features that Firebug doesn't even have. I will also demonstrate this in my talk. I will actually focus on the tools that are missing in Firebug. However, you can access them directly from either Firefox or Google Chrome. And as it was already mentioned by Lena, uh, I like to take my chances. And uh, I will demonstrate a lot of tools that are using uh, Chrome Canary, so the very recent version of Chrome, and Firefox Nightly. So a lot of things can break, but I decided that it will make for more entertaining presentation if I will fail. So let's give it a try. Also, you are absolutely free to correct me if I'm making some mistakes or if my hands are shaking too much and I will make some typos. And your help will be appreciated. So this is the website which I didn't make, but I'm quite familiar with. It's a website for the company I work for. It's a gaming company, and it's using some new features of HTML5 and CSS3, like this animated butterfly that appears on the page from time to time. 
is using CSS transitions. And as you could see on the screen, first I will start with Firefox Nightly and the new development tools that are available under Tools menu, under Web Developer. And some of these tools are already available in stable version of Firefox, in Firefox 20, but not all of them. So let me open them. You could see at the bottom of the screen that it looks a bit like black version of Firebug. So we have Web Console, we have DOM Inspector, JavaScript Debugger, CSS Editor, Profiler, which is not yet present in stable version of Firefox, it's not even finished, and the Network Inspector, which is very fresh. It was added to Firefox Nightly uh, just over a week ago, and it's also quite incomplete, so that's why it's not in stable version. Uh, let me start with a tool that you are familiar with from Firebug, which also features something new. So in Firefox, you have Font Inspector, uh, which is providing more detailed information about the web fonts and standard fonts that uh, you are using on the page. And the great thing about this tool is that you can edit the text that is visible uh, in the fonts uh, embedded on this page. So this page is using a custom font for headings. and because uh, I have this live review, I can use special characters, even crazy characters from Polish language. And you could see that this font doesn't have these characters. So this is already useful debugging information if I'm using web fonts, which uh, characters are available and which are not. And now I would like to show some tiny buttons that are probably not visible from behind. However, they provide very useful functionality. You could find them at the bottom of the toolbar. And let me first start with repaint tool. It's a small paintbrush, and you could see that suddenly the page started to change colors. So the repaint tool is showing you areas of the screen which are repainted or re-rendered by the browser as we animate them. Why this is useful? Well, sometimes if you would like to see how many elements on the page are affected by your DOM changes, this tool will always highlight them. If you have some performance issue that you change one element and yet the browser is doing much more operations, it's probably a sign that you should use Repaint tool to see which elements exactly are being changed. You could also see that as I scroll the page, the browser is re-rendering quite a lot of the screen estate. The next tool is 3D view, which doesn't always work for me. Let's see if it will work this time. And no, it doesn't work. Hooray for live demos. Uh, but let me try again. Press the magic button, and yep, now it worked. So suddenly I have 3D hardware accelerated WebGL version of the page, uh, and I can even interact with it. So I can, yes, that's the right moment to say ooh. Uh, and the great thing about this view, which I initially thought was completely useless, is that you can see elements that are not rendered on the page, that, that are shown off screen, like this hidden element at the top. But you could also see some problems with your DOM tree. So you could see that there are two skyscrapers at the bottom of the screen. And this is like button from Facebook. And the other slightly smaller is Twitter uh, share button or tweet button. So this is indication that these elements are probably using more DOM that it would be absolutely necessary. Unfortunately, you cannot really change the snippet from Facebook, but when you are assembling your own DOM, then you should pay attention that you don't create too many nodes, more nodes that it's necessary. There is also one other cool functionality that you could use 3 d view for, but I need to wait for a butterfly to appear on the screen. And I discovered this just recently, that you can actually click on the elements on the screen and select them. So right now I managed to select the butterfly and it select, selected this butterfly in the DOM inspector. So this way, it, this is a way to make a snapshot of the page if you have an animation and it will be static and then from this point on you can select an element and you can inspect it in DOM inspector. So you can think about this as a snapshot to, to debug dynamic pages. So this is 3D view. Uh, let me exit this view. And the last one I would like to show is also relatively new. It's responsive design mode. Uh, it's very simple tool, but quite useful. It's useful for creating responsive pages. So the pages that change 
their design as you change the resolution or the device. So I can still have my development tools at the bottom of the screen at full size. I don't have to resize the whole window, but I can just resize the interactive area of my page. And you could see that uh, Wuga.com was designed in a way that is responsive, so it works differently on smaller screens like on mobile devices. And there are even some predefined sizes uh, which I can edit to debug for mobile devices. So this is functionality that is uh, already quite unique, but uh, the makers of Firefox decided to add something even better. They decided to uh, add an, a console which is different from um, which is different from the regular console log. Let me exit this amazing responsive view. Uh, so you are probably familiar with console log statements, but uh, this is slightly different. So this small bar at the bottom is not really a console, it's command line, which you can use to script your browser. You can tell your browser to do different things. If I type help, I will get all the commands that uh, I can use it for. And the great thing about this tool is that it's extensible, so you can write your own commands that will be used here. Probably you don't see that much, especially from the distance, but I would like to demonstrate one tool that is available here. You can take a full screenshot of the page. You could see that this particular page doesn't fit on one screen. I have to scroll down to see the full version of it. And very often you need to take the full screenshot of the page, and you either have to, so far, either install browser extension or assemble the screenshots in Photoshop, which is not very handy. Instead, you could do it using the screenshot command. Uh, you have to provide a file name. Let's say I will put it in the folder demo. I have a shortcut to this folder here. And just to prove I'm not cheating, it's empty right now. And I will call this screenshot Wuga PNG. And there is an option full page that I can use. Full page. And can't access better. Yes. Маленькое объявление. Оранжевый форт 3224 ОК-7 OK заграждает шлагбаум. Если кто-то знает, если это чья-то машина, либо кто-то знает, кто это, то поспособствуйте, пожалуйста. Спасибо, Соня. No problem. Actually, Lena came out in a perfect time because I had uh, something that didn't work. So maybe after reloading the page, it will work. So let me try again. Uh, screenshot and the parameter is full page. Yep, and you could see that at the bottom of the screen in my demo folder, there is a new picture that appeared, and it's in fact a full screen version of this page. But I didn't have to do anything with Photoshop, it was just made for me. And I strongly encourage every one of you to explore this tool. Uh, just open this in from uh, the tools menu, type help, and you will see what kind of useful functionality you already have there. And maybe one more thing that is available in Firefox DevTools, it's JavaScript Beautifier. It's handily called JSB, acronym for JavaScript Beautifier, and it allows you to see a prettified version of a script that you may have on this page. So, for instance, I know already that there is jQuery included on this page, and I will try to select it, select the URL, and just to prove that this is uh, a minified version, you could see how it looks originally. However, using JavaScript Beautifier, I get this prettified view, which is much more useful. It still has um, variables that are not called as they are called originally, but it's still more readable than minified version. And the best thing about this view is that it's actually interactive, so I can type my own JavaScript commands. Maybe I will try to employ some of my amazing design skills and try to change the style of this page. So let me go to document body, style, background, color, and set it to something pretty. And there is no color more pretty than pink. And you could see that after I reloaded this uh, script without reloading the whole page, and the design has changed to my amazing taste. So, uh, that's it for Firefox. And let me go to Chrome. I will show you some demos in Chrome Canary, which is the recent version of uh, Chrome. If you are using stable version of Chrome, it's fine. 
However, if you'd like to see what's coming up next, I strongly encourage you to try out Google Canary. Usually their release cycle is about six weeks, so what you can see right now in Canary will be in stable from Chrome just in a few weeks from now. Uh, what I would like to start with is the console API. So you are probably familiar with most of these tabs here and you are familiar with the console. However, console has much more than console log statement. Uh, one of the functionalities I would like to show is uh, called console timestamp. It's uh, a functionality that allows you to embed custom markers in your timeline view. So the timeline view demonstrates how your page is being loaded and you can add your custom events to this page. I will demonstrate this on a different page. Um, it's a small data visualization that I was working on uh, in my spare time. This is a data visualization for my blog and it's quite a huge page that is doing quite a lot of uh, operations on DOM. And let's say I would like to debug how this page is loading and what is taking time uh, as the page is loading. So now I will go to my editor. I recently switched to Sublime Text, so I'm also struggling a bit with this tool, but this will make this talk even more entertaining and more risky. So let me add uh, two console statements directly in my JavaScript source code. So it's called timestamp, and I can add a custom name to it. So let's call it TS. Um, and this will be executed before all my JavaScript functions are called. So at the top of this file, they are defined, and here they are called. And uh, I will have another timestamp, let's call it TS end. It will mean that uh, I'm done with calling all this functionality in JavaScript. And now when I will go back to the browser, open the timeline view, mm. I need to press record button, which for whatever reason now is was hidden. Okay, it's here. And let me reload the page. Stop the recording. And in Chrome, it's not very useful view. It's not particularly visible, but you could see that there are two extra lines, and there are orange, that are extra comparing to the standard two lines that you have normally. So this two lines, the blue one and the red one, indicate that DOM content has been loaded, which is probably something you are familiar with, and window on load event has been triggered. However, these two lines that I added were custom. So what should happen is that when I uh, remove them from the source code, they will be also removed from here. But Chrome, to be honest, is not really presenting this in a best way. I actually like the fireback view a bit more. And the cool thing about commands uh, console API is that it's compatible with fireback as well. So if you are using these commands I'm showing today, uh, in fireback they will also work. So if I will go to Firefox, open Firebug, and go to Network tab, and let me reload this page again. You could see that there are four markers, just like in Chrome, except in Firebug, I also get this useful tooltip that demonstrates me a time where each of these timestamps uh, was executed. So if you look at the bottom of this uh, yellow area, which I cannot point a cursor at because it will move with me, uh, you could see that there are times in milliseconds of each marker I added. So there is TS and TS end. So this is one part of um, this API offered by uh, console, by development tools. But if I would like to debug my uh, JavaScript execution time in more detail, there is something even better. It's profiler. There are two commands that I need to use. One is called profile, and let's call it my profile. And this is the mark of the beginning of a profiling uh, period. And there is another corresponding command called profile end, and it has to take the same uh, parameter, the same name for my profile. Let me go back to Chrome. Um, reload the page, but this time I will restart the development tools. And this time I will have uh, the console open and let's see what will happen. So now you could see that there were two uh, lines added, and they say that my profile was started and my profile was finished, and I can click on this name. And if I will click on this, the profile view will open, and I will have the profile I just created. 
So if you are not familiar with the profiling in JavaScript or in any other language, this is showing you your current execution stack with the times that uh, your browser has spent in each function in JavaScript. So you could see uh, which functions are taking the most time. And I could see that the function called Kuiper rows is by far spending the most time uh, on executing. And this is true because it's actually doing quite a lot of DOM operations. So this way you can select some area of your page in your JavaScript. Then you can surround it with profile and profile end directed in console and you will get very detailed report about what's going on in this area of the page. However, there is one more functionality uh, in, the pro in the console view I would like to show. Since recently, the console API support uh, custom formats, custom formatting for your uh, console log statements. So you can provide a special format indicator called C, uh, which allows you to include any custom CSS directly in your uh, console logs. So let's say I want to have a um, custom string, let's say hello from means, and as a second parameter, I will provide some CSS rules. So again, I will use my amazing design skills, and let's say the color will be red, and the background will be green. That should make a perfect design. And let's see what will happen. Oh, and you could see that I got a custom message. I can even make it bigger, because uh, every design, when it's bigger, is better. So let's make it 20 pixels. Yes, it's even better right now. Excellent. Uh, someone took this idea to the extreme and created this very useful tool for ordering sushi directly from your command line, from your console. So let's give it a try. Um, unfortunately, I cannot eat, I cannot, uh, I can eat sushi. I cannot speak Japanese, so I have no idea what these buttons mean, but let's press the first one. Oh, and I just get some sushi. Uh, there is another one. This one sounds even, looks even more delicious. Okay, maybe you have noticed that when I was showing uh, Uga page, there was this strange red thing uh, at the top right corner of the screen. It's FPS counter. This is functionality that is hidden by default by Chrome, but if you have pages uh, where you are using hardware accelerated elements, this is very useful to debug performance of your page. You could see that as I start scrolling down and up the page, uh, the performance is dropping a bit because the browser has to do more operations. Uh, in order to use this functionality, you have to go to the special page in Chrome. It's called About Flags. And you have to search for FPS counter here. And you could see that uh, it's available here. Uh, by default, it's uh, disabled. I already enabled it, so I cannot do much more here. And this is something that will activate as soon as you enter any page that is using hardware acceleration. And there are two hardware accelerated elements that may appear on your pages right now. One is WebGL elements that are using Canvas. And secondly, CSS transitions. So this particular page is using CSS transitions to animate these pink butterflies. And therefore, uh, there is already FPS counter at the top. This page, on the other hand, is much more old fashioned. It doesn't use any hardware acceleration on your graphic card, so it doesn't show FPS counter. So remember about this whenever you have to debug some CSS performance or WebGL performance. Next functionality is a bit more tricky. It's one of the more advanced things. And it's about debugging your memory usage on the page. It is actually possible to create memory leaks in JavaScript. It's something that doesn't happen often, but it may happen, especially if you have web app that is living and that is open for a long time. So for instance, if you have a page like Facebook that people tend to keep open pretty much all the time, and there is a lot of DOM interaction on that page, it's useful to know when there are memory leaks on the page. JavaScript is a garbage collection, a garbage collected um, language, so most of the memory management is done for you. However, in some situations, it's possible to have references between DOM and JavaScript work, which may create objects that will be not garbage collected. And you can use the tools available in Chrome to find this. So I created a very simple page that uh, is eating and consuming more and more memory. And I will use the timeline view 
with the record button to see the memory consumption going up on this page. So this blue area should grow, and you could see that if I will not do anything for some time, uh, the memory usage will drop down. This means that the garbage collection has kicked in and the memory has been reclaimed. Let me stop the process. So you could see that the memory usage was growing until garbage collection kicked in. However, this page is a bit special because uh, it's creating more objects that are not really discarded. So if you actually have memory leak and you would like to see where this is coming from, uh, you have this timeline view which is showing that memory is not fully reclaimed after garbage collection, you have to use the profile tab. And there are three kinds of profiles that you can take there. The one we are interested right now is a heap snapshot, which is concerning memory. And let me reload the page. I will take maybe three snapshots. The first one, uh, maybe two, two will be enough. The first one will be taken after I click this button for consuming memory once. So it created a small button uh, slightly lower. Now I will press it for the second time and take another heat snapshot. Now if I will select the second snapshot, let me make this window a bit, a bit bigger, and there is a special view called comparison view. And using this comparison view, I can compare the state of the memory with the current snapshot with the one that I previously have taken. So you could see right now I'm seeing a difference between snapshot two, the current one, and snapshot one. And what you could see in the main area are all the objects in the DOM and in uh, JavaScript memory that I created in between. Right now, I don't see any memory leaks. Uh, Chrome is highlighting them in red. It is actually possible to create them. It doesn't really happen often. The yellow elements are not really actual memory leaks, so this memory will be reclaimed. But if you have problem with your pages getting slower and slower if you keep them open in a browser, this is a way to go. This is a place where you could try to debug this. And uh, for the end, I left my favorite demo. It's favorite because uh, on the rehearsal of this talk, it was failing me, and I had no idea why. So let me try to see if it will, if it will work this time. And uh, this will concern about concern functionality called source maps. I wonder how many of you have heard about source maps so far. So some people already have. For the ones that uh, have not tried this out, I would like to show how to use it and what this functionality is about. So, so source map is a way of mapping your original source that could be written in Dart, CoffeeScript, or any other language that you are using on the server side, and map this to resources that are actually seen by the browser. So let's say on the back end you are writing your JavaScript uh, with CoffeeScript, so you don't write directly JavaScript code. However, you would like to see the original CoffeeScript source in the browser. Normally, it's not really possible. So on this particular page, I decided to give a try to Dart. Dart is a language that is developed by Google. It's something like an improved version of JavaScript. And you could see that if I will open the source code of this page in Web Inspector, I have a huge chunk of generated JavaScript that was generated by Dart compiler. So this is normal. This is what you would normally see. However, this is not the Dart code that I have written. And using source maps, I can actually see the original source. In order to be able to see that, I have to go to Settings for Development Tools, find source, source maps here, and I have to enable them. And let me reload the page and see what will happen. And you could see that some things have changed. Suddenly I have many more files open in the sources tab. And I have this one special tab which shows me the original source of this page in Dart. So this page is not really very complex. All it does is prints out some message in the console. So RGB string in uppercase and lowercase. However, this code was written in Dart. Let me make it a bit bigger if possible to show it. And the, probably the coolest thing about this uh, functionality is that I can even place uh, breakpoints directly in my Dart code. So let's say I will place it here where this string is rendered in the console. Let me reload the page. 
and you could see that execution has stopped. And I can even see the call stack on the right side. Unfortunately, this is not a call stack in Dart because obviously Chrome is not able to understand this uh, language unless you are using Chromium. Uh, this is a call stack in JavaScript. But if you have trouble when your CoffeeScript code or your Dart code is behaving strangely and you would like to debug it, this is already a very, very helpful tool. It's also important to note that you can use it also for CSS. So if you are generating CSS using things like less or sus, uh, you can also use source maps to uh, generate readable output that you can later on debug and see as original version directly in your browser. Uh, in slide notes, I included URL to a page that explains source maps in detail, because you have to generate them first, and uh, there are already tools for that which you have to use. The very last thing I wanted to show is so advanced that uh, I have not even used it before. It's something called tracing. Let me go to special hidden pages in Chrome. This one is called Chrome Tracing. And you could see that, well, it's not really amazing. It's just a blank page. However, it has this magic record button, which allows you to see everything, like literally everything that happens on your page and is done by the browser. So let's say that I will decide to go to another tab, open Wooga page, and I'm interested what will happen when this page is animated. To do that, I press the record button in the tracing tab. Here I can say which parts of the browser functionality I would like to track, which I would like to record. And you could see that uh, there is a core browser functionality, there is stuff done by WebKit, by V8, JavaScript engine, and there is also functionality performed by, or activities performed by uh, graphic card. Because I have no idea what they are doing, I will just select everything and go to Wuga tab, do something, go back, stop recording, give it some time, and suddenly I got very detailed information about everything that was happening uh, on the page. And you could see that these charts are grouped by subsystems, and, and I can select some area of this chart to get detailed timing information about what's going on. So. This tool looks simple, but is in fact quite sophisticated, and you may wonder, well, will I ever use this tool, or is it any useful for me? And there is one area where you can use it, and it's actually quite helpful, and this is using WebGL. So if you are developing a WebGL game and you would like to see which parts of your screen or your canvas element are hardware accelerated, which are not, this is the place to go, because here you can find which subsystem of the browser is doing what, and in what time. And that's the last part of the demo. Uh, let me go back to slides. So only a few things have failed, so I'm a bit disappointed, but still. To summarize what I was talking about, when you make web pages, there are different phases. The first one is creation phase, and in this phase you can use functionality like live editing, Scratchpad, which is this window of JavaScript which you could edit live, and the response to view. And you could see that I listed here only uh, functionality that is present in Firefox, because there is a lot of focus from Firefox makers to make the prototyping, the editing phase, really great. When you are done with your prototyping phase and your creation phase, probably there will be bugs in your code. What tools can you use to debug? Well, you can use console log, which you know and love, but now you know better how to even use custom formatting for that. You can use the repainting tool to see which elements on the page are being changed by the browser, available in Firefox. And you can use source maps, which is essential when you are developing your backend part and generating frontend using CoffeeScript, using Dart, or using less or SAS. And finally, when you would like to make your page really great, you are interested in speed and performance. And the tools that you have at your disposal are tabs like Audit tab from Chrome, which I didn't show today, but probably you are already familiar with it. You can use console timestamp, you can use console profile. FPS counter, which is unique functionality in Chrome, can be also very useful. Profilers, there are profilers also for CSS performance and for JavaScript performance. Today I show you how to use memory profiler, which is probably less used and underutilized, but on large pages it's actually quite useful. 
And if you go deeper into WebGL, then about tracing is a place to investigate your performance. If you would like to learn more about these tools, I have some bonus slides. There is great functionality that is present since recently in Sublime Edit, which allows you to do, to do this live editing, which I show from the browser, but to do it straight from your editor. Of course, Sublime is much more powerful editor than anything that is built in the browser, and you can see your changes reflected directly on the page. And finally, if you are using mobile development, I encourage you to try remote debugging, which is making it easy to connect your phone and use all these development tools I was showing today to debug pages you have on your mobile phone, either in iPhone or your Android phone. If you'd like to learn even more, I encourage you to follow these people on Twitter or on their websites. Uh, Paul Rouget is a French guy who is working on development tools for Firefox. Paul Irish is working on tools for uh, Chrome. He's working for Google. And finally, Adi Osmani. He's really a great guy because his blog is full of very, very deep articles and resources about how to use hidden functionality or not obvious functionality in Web Inspector. If I were to conclude my talk, I would encourage you to focus on the basic tools that you have built in in your browser and learn more about them. The functionality I was showing today is not really covering everything. There is much more. And if you would like to be really great at what you are doing, you should learn the basic tools first. And this is the conclusion of my talk. I finished just on time, so I don't know if we have time for questions. А как же вопросы? Есть ли вопросы? I know what вопросы means, but probably I will not understand the question the same. If so. Uh, what tool, uh, Firebug or uh, Chrome DevTools or uh, Firefox DevTools uh, uh, do you use uh, in your work every day and why? I use all of them, actually. Uh, but Thanks. it's great. <laughs> my primary tool so far has been Firebug, but at this point I'm switching more into Firefox native tools. Uh, I'm more Firefox guy. This is my default browser. I've been using Nightly as default one since 2005. And uh, right now, these new tools from Firefox, I like covering like 80% of Firebug functionality. So for this 20%, I'm still using Firebug. But this is default tool. However, for mobile, I use mostly WebKit Inspector because it's actually better for WebKit based browsers. And other questions? Maybe in это... Russian as well, and someone can translate. Видимо, это было похоже на сеанс шаманизма, шаманства, после которого все забыли, что. I will be available Отлично. during the break as well. Hello. Uh, do you know when Firefox will fix memory issues? Rendering issues. Memory issues memory with issues. Uh, Firebug and browser itself. Uh, actually, they are fixing them all the time. So probably there will never be a point where everything is done. So recently they introduced a new JavaScript engine, which is supposed to be better. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> this is sad. It's a uh, nice presentation, and um, my question maybe it's like something from your experience. Uh, recently, I faced a bug in uh, Chrome DevTools. Uh, if you try to use step by step debugging, mm -hmm. and you cannot see DOM changes uh, when you come through some DOM manipulation functions. Uh, have you ever seen this and do you know how to fix it? Because, for example, in Fire, uh, Firebug from Firefox works well and if you step through some changes, for example, show or hide some block, it really shows or hidden in uh, your browser. Mm, I don't know this particular issue. However, I know that uh, especially Paul Irish is very present on Twitter and he's working as a representative of the team responsible for DevTools. So his only job is really work on DevTools. So I would uh, report this back. They also have uh, open uh, issue tracker. So unless it was already reported, I would encourage you to create a test case and report it. Uh, 